Today, we will talk about the magnetic compass errors, specifically in this video, about the magnetic variation and deviation. The thing is that, as we mentioned in the previous video, the magnetic compass is basically a magnet that is free to rotate about a pivot point, and therefore, since it has such a simple design, it has certain inherent errors that pilots should be aware of. These errors are magnetic variation, compass deviation, and magnetic dip, which in turn is divided into acceleration error and turning error. So in this particular video, we will deal with the variation and deviation errors. But before going into detail with this, let's remember how does a compass work real quick. The magnetic compass is an instrument used to determine the orientation or heading in relation to the Earth's magnetic north. And it manages to do so by aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic field lines. Within this definition, we already have the basis for understanding the first type of error. And it is that the compass points to magnetic north, not geographic north. Now, the Earth's magnetic north is the point through which the magnetic field lines enter the planet. And therefore, it is the point to which all compasses point. The thing is that, although they are relatively close, magnetic north does not coincide with true north. In other words, the geographic north pole and the magnetic north pole are located in different places. So, we would have something like this. Here, the green point, which represents the Earth's geographic north, is the one which is aligned with the Earth's axis of rotation. And it is also the point where all meridians converge. While the red point represents the Earth's magnetic north, the point towards which all compasses point. Now, another characteristic of magnetic north is that it does not remain static in the same position, but moves over the years. In these images, we can see how the magnetic north pole has been moving since the 1900s. From the northern part of Canada, towards Siberia. Now, this difference between the position of geographic and magnetic north results in some problems for navigation. For example, geographic north is used as a reference in navigation charts, since it is the point where all meridians converge, and these in turn, are used to determine the course to be flown. The problem is that when flying, we will use a compass to follow the planned course, which will point to magnetic north, not geographic north. This means that we will have to correct the planned course according to the difference in the position of the magnetic and geographic poles. This difference between both poles is known as the magnetic variation, abbreviated as MAGVAR, and sometimes referred to as magnetic declination. It is defined as the angle between true, or geographic north, and magnetic north. This variation can be to the east or to the west, depending on the relative position of the poles, which at the same time, depends on our position on Earth. This may sound a bit confusing so far, so let's see an example. Let us suppose that we are at the point marked with the white cross. In this case, if we draw a straight line to the true north, and another one to the magnetic north. The angle between these two lines would be the magnetic variation. Now, in this particular case, magnetic north is to the left of true north, or in other words it is to the west of true north. Then we say that we have a west variation. Now, as we previously said, this variation will vary depending on our position on Earth. Let's see why through this example. Here, we are looking at the Earth from a top point of view. The red point represents the geographic north pole, and the yellow one represents the magnetic north pole. With this in mind, suppose we are at the point marked with the white cross. If from this position we look at the poles, we can see that even though they are not in the same place, they are in the same direction. Then we say that in this case, the magnetic variation is zero since there is no angular difference between both poles. Now, if we move into this new position and look at the poles, we can see that now there is an angular difference between the lines. In this case, the magnetic north is to the left of true north, or in other words, the magnetic north is to the west of true north. Then we say that we have a west variation. The same happens if we move into this other position. From this point, the magnetic north is also west of true north, and therefore we still have a west variation. 
and the same happens in this other position. However, in this other position, we can see that once again, there is no angular difference between both lines, which means that we have zero variation. And for example, in this other position, we have now the magnetic north to the right of true north, or in other words, to the east. Which means that in this case we have an east variation. So according to what we have just seen, if we have an east variation, this means that the magnetic north is to the east of true north, as we can see in this examples. On the other hand, if we have a west variation, it means that the magnetic north is to the west of true north, as we can see here. Now, in case we have a zero variation, this means that the magnetic north and true north are in the same direction, and therefore, there is no angular difference, as we can see in this examples. So far, we have seen the general concept of magnetic variation, but, how do we know what is the actual value of the magnetic variation in a certain place? Well, to do so, a complete model of the Earth has been created, with which it is possible to determine the magnetic variation at any point on the planet. Here, each of these lines represent a specific magnetic variation angle. And these are known as isogonic lines, since they connect points of equal magnetic variation. We will find these lines on the navigation charts, represented by dashed lines with their corresponding magnetic variation value. For example in the image on the left, we can see that the isogonic line represents a magnetic variation of 15 degrees west. In other words, if from that area we observe both poles, we will see that the magnetic north is 15 degrees to the west of true north. On the other hand, in the image on the right, the isogonic line represents a magnetic variation of 14 degrees east. Which means that from that area, the magnetic north is 14 degrees to the east of true north. Now, in this video we will not see in detail the exact procedure by which the planned course is corrected according to the magnetic variation, however, here is a short overview. The magnetic course is obtained adding or subtracting the magnetic variation to the planned true course. If we have a west variation, we have to add, and if we have an east variation, we have to subtract. We can easily remember this with the phrase, east is least and west is best. But again, we will see this procedure in detail in the videos about general navigation. With this being said, let's move on to the next compass error. The compass deviation. This error is caused because any nearby magnetic interference will cause the compass to deviate and give an erroneous indication. So, as we know, a compass is basically a magnet that uses the Earth's magnetic field to align itself properly and point to magnetic north. This implies that any external magnetic interference will cause it to deviate, thus pointing to a kind of new north. This new north to which the compass points is known as compass north, and we will abbreviate it as NC. Now, obviously, this compass deviation constitutes an error in the heading indication. So, in order to correct it, we have to see the concept of deviation angle. This is the angle between magnetic north and compass north. In other words, the angle between the magnetic north and where the compass is actually pointing. It is important to mention that this angle is not always the same, since it will depend on each aircraft, the magnitude of the magnetic interference present, and the heading. In general terms, the major magnetic interference in an aircraft is caused by the engine and the avionics equipment. Therefore, the compass deviation will depend on the position of the engine and avionics in relation to the magnetic north. Fortunately, the interference produced by the different components of the aircraft can be measured and corrected for each heading. However, there are other sources of magnetic interference that may be present, such as cell phones and other portable electronic devices. This is one of the reasons for restricting the use of these devices during the flight. Now, the question is, how do we know how much is the compass deviation for a particular aircraft and heading? Well, for that, there is the compass deviation card. This is a card which includes compass deviation information for a particular aircraft and for different headings. In this example, in the upper row we find the desired magnetic heading, 
while in the lower row we find the corrected heading to be used, taking into account the compass deviation. Therefore, the difference between these two values will be the deviation angle for that particular heading. This card is normally located in the cockpit so that it is visible to the pilot. For example, just below the compass. But let's look a little bit more in detail this card. As we just said before, in the upper row we find the desired magnetic heading, while in the lower row we find the corrected heading to be used in the compass. From another perspective, we could say that in the upper part we find the heading in relation to the actual magnetic north, while in the lower part we find the heading in relation to the compass north. For example in this card, if we want to fly with a north heading, which is 0 degrees, we have to fly with our compass indicating heading 005. This means that in this case, the compass deviation is plus 5 degrees. If we want to fly heading 090, we have to fly with a compass indication of 088. So in this case the deviation is minus 2 degrees. For heading 180 the deviation is 0 degrees, and for heading 270, the deviation is plus 2 degrees. Now, sometimes the compass deviation may be expressed in terms of east or west, instead of plus or minus. Here we apply the same rule, as with the magnetic variation. East is least, and west is best. So in this example, these would be the compass deviations expressed in terms of east and west. Now, by this point we might be wondering, how are these deviation values determined and published in this card? Well, at some airports there are specific positions where maintenance personnel can calibrate the compass and register the information into the compass deviation card. Here, the aircraft is aligned with different headings in a compass rose marked on the ground with the engine running. Then the maintenance personnel registers the different compass readings and then determine the compass deviation for each particular heading. These procedure must be accomplished at regular intervals or when new equipment is installed on the aircraft. In summary then. The magnetic variation is the angle between true north and magnetic north, and it can be either east or west, depending on our position on Earth. On the other hand, the compass deviation is the angle between magnetic north and compass north, and it depends on each aircraft and its current heading. Usually these errors are manually corrected by the pilot during flight planning. And although we are not going to go into detail with these procedures, since they will be explained in the general navigation videos. Let's see a simple example. Suppose we want to fly from Santa Juana to Servio Tulio. In this case, to measure the course we can use this meridian. And as we already know, meridians are aligned with the geographic or true north. So if we measure for example an angle of 120 degrees this will be the course in relation to the true north, and it is called, true course. The problem here, is that we cannot fly with 120 indicated on the compass, since the compass is not aligned with the true north, but with the magnetic north. Therefore, we have to apply the magnetic variation correction. To do so, we can see, that there is an isogonic line close to the root, which represents a magnetic variation of 7 degrees west. This means, in other words, that in this area, the magnetic north is 7 degrees west of true north. So, as we have a 7 degrees west variation, we have to add that value to the true course of 120, thus obtaining a magnetic course of 127. However, we still cannot use 127 as reference in the compass, since we haven't yet applied the compass deviation correction. To do so, let's suppose this is the compass deviation card for this aircraft. So for a desired magnetic heading of 127, the closest published value is 090. And for that heading, the compass deviation is plus 3 degrees, which can also be expressed as 3 degrees west. What this means is that the compass north is 3 degrees west of the magnetic north, as we can see in the example. With this in mind, and having applied all the necessary corrections, we obtain a compass heading of 130. And therefore this will be the heading, to be adjusted on the compass, while flying this leg. This was just a quick example, of how the variation and deviation are used in the practice. However these corrections are normally applied using a VFR navigation log, while planning the flight. Since there are other variables, 
to be taken into account, such as the wind or the true airspeed. We will deal with that in detail in the general navigation videos later on. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.